let's do a couple of examples with looking at the power model versus the exponential model using logarithms. So in the April 1st, 2011 edition of the Arizona Daily Star, the following data was presented about mandatory fees at the University of Alabama, or excuse me, Arizona, I should say. Um, so there's different years and different fees. If we let x equals 4 represent the 2004 to 2005 year, we want to graph a scatter plot and we want to see does the relationship look linear, okay? So even though these are our years 2004 to 05, 05 to 06, this is actually year, this is my value 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. And let's just make a rough scatter plot here um, of our data. So we'll do that now. I'm not even going to put it in my calculator yet. I just want to make a rough graph. So I need to go from at least 4 to 11 on my x-axis and ooh, all the way up to like at least 900 there. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. As you can see from my very rough scatter plot sketch, um, this is clearly not linear, right? Uh, not linear. But then the question begs, is it going to be exponential or is it going to be power? Which one is going to be the better fit? Which model is going to be the better fit? So let's do some exploring. If we think it's going to be a power model, right? Power comes, we just saw this in our uh, last kind of working. Power is when you raise and you transform both your X and your Y data by doing either logs or natural logs of your data of both X and Y. So they're telling us to do a graph of linear or the natural log of the year versus the natural log of the fees and find the least squares regression line for that. So now would be a good time to put our data in our calculator if we have not already. And in our list, since we want natural log, now where is the natural log button on here? Uh, oh, it's right there beneath the log. So if you do the natural log of list one, that'll give you the natural log of your X's, AKA your years. And then in the next column, you can do the natural log of the Y's, which was your fees. And we want to do a graph of that. So you can make a rough scatter plot for yourself um, here on your notes using these values. So you don't need to have a huge graph like we did for the last one. It only goes from like one to two for the X's and then four to six-ish, seven-ish for the Y's. Now we also wanna find the line of best fit for this. So let's pause for a second and make the scatter plot first. So I just did a rough sketch of my scatter plot, graphing my linear, or I keep saying linear, my natural log of my year compared to my natural log of my fees. Um, I also made one on my calculator, just so I can kind of see how it compares. I did a decent job there. Now we want to find the least squares regression line, and we want to make sure we note the value of R. So it's been a minute since we talked about R. So if we go to stat and we go to test and you go to linreg t-test down at the bottom. Remember we're using our transform data which is in the third and the fourth list. And we go down to calculate. We get our equation for our least squares regression line. Now remember, we have to be careful when we uh, define our variables here. So y is our fees, but we didn't just use y, we used the natural log of y. So it's gonna be ln of my fees, don't forget your hat, equals 1.05 plus 2.2, Six times the natural log of my x, which in this case was my year. We wanted to note r, 
r equals 0 0.95. Uh, six. Now, why do we want to know R? We want to figure out which model is best, the power model or the exponential model. Um, the equation of the line that has the stronger R is going to be the better fit, the one that's more linear. Okay. So now let's see how the exponential model fits. Again, we're going to do a graph. But instead of graphing the natural log of the year versus the natural log of the fees, we just want to graph the year versus the fees. So go ahead and press pause again, and let's make a scatter plot. Um, and we're actually going to do a little sketch of it on our notes. So we're going to do it for our years, which is located in our first list, right? 4, 5, 6 through 11. And then the natural log of my fees, which was in list 4. So go ahead, press pause, and make a scatter plot. You can see my scatter plot graphing my year compared to my natural log of my fees. I also did one on my calculator just to kind of compare. Not too bad of a job there, Miss Miller. So we want to get our equation for our least squares regression line, and we want to find the value of R. So I'm going to go to stat and we're going to go to tests. Down at the bottom, we do Linreg t test. We have our x values located in our first list because that's where the original data was because we didn't transform the x's. We only transformed the y's and those were in list four. We're going to go down and calculate and we're going to have our equation there. So let's again make sure we define our variables. So just like before, we have the natural log of the fees. So that has not changed. It's still the natural log of the fees. Don't forget your hat. My y-intercept was 3 point, uh, well, let's just say 3.0, good enough, plus a slope of 0 point, I don't know, 3, 3. I'm only going to go to two decimal places. And then instead of the natural log of the year, it was just the year. And I'll scroll down and find my R value. Ooh, R is 0 0.981. R is 0 0.981, which is a higher R value than the other one. Now, they're both pretty high, right? I would consider these R values to be strong, positive relationships, um, linear relationships, I should say. But this one is going to be slightly bigger, which tells me that exponential is the better fit. Exponential is going to be the better fit compared to the power model. So the exponential model is the one we want to go with. So now it says use the appropriate model, which is going to be this one, to predict our fees for 2012-2013, aka when x equals 12. Um, it's a little bit, you know, it's the next one down, but it's okay. We're not like super looking into the future, so we don't need to worry about extrapolation here. So let us plug 12 in to this line of best fit equation. We're going to be, need to be a little bit careful, but I will show you why. So the natural log of my fees under my hat equals 3 plus 0.33 times 12, which is going to give me a value of 6.96, but that's the natural log of my fees. I don't want to know the natural log of my fees. I want to know my fees. I want to predict just the fees. So how do you get rid of a natural log? You would have to raise both sides or raise that to both sides and put e to that power. Do you remember doing that back in pre-calculus? So in order to just get the fees, we would need to do e to the 6.96 power. I know it's been a minute since you've done that. So in my calculator, I would find that e button, which is right down here. You hit second natural log. So e to the 6.96 gives us 1,053.63, which makes sense if you're following along with the data. 
So my predicted fees is going to be $1,053.63 in the year 2012 to 2013. All right, let's look at the next example. Turn the page. A student opened a bag of M&Ms, dumped them out, and ate all the ones with the M on top. When he finished, he put the remaining 30 M&Ms back in the bag and repeated the same process over and over until all of the M&Ms were gone. Here is a table showing the number of M&Ms remaining at the end of each course. A scatter plot of the natural log of the number of M&Ms remaining versus the course number is shown below. Explain why it would be reasonable to use an exponential model to describe the relationship between the number of M&Ms remaining and the course number. All right, so let's look what we have here. Originally, we have the courses and the M&Ms remaining. So that was my original X and Y. Then we went ahead and we transformed my Y values. And we graphed them here. But we left the courses as it is. Now... If you were to graph this data, this original data, um, it would not be linear. However, this graph, this scatter plot, is linear. So we want to know why is exponential going to be the best one here? Well, because the fact that the graph of x versus the natural log of y is approximately linear, we know that the exponential model is the best fit. As opposed to the power model, okay? Uh, power is when you have to transform both of the data to make it linear, but this data is already linear, so we know exponential is gonna be best. And that's because we're graphing x compared to the natural log of y. Now, this computer output from a linear regression analysis on the transform data is shown below. So this data came from this transformed data, okay? We want to give the equation of the least squares regression line defining any variables you use. So remember where your important stuff is, right? Your important stuff is going to go right here. The top one is your y-intercept. The bottom one is your slope. Now, because my data has been transformed, we have the natural log of my remaining M&Ms don't forget your hat, is going to be equal to my y-intercept goes first, 4.0593 minus 0 0.68073. And then we didn't do anything to the x's, so we can simply just write course number. Okay. Now use your equation to predict the number, the original number of M&Ms in the bag. So if I want to know the original number, remember our data showed us after each course, so the original number would represent course zero. So we're going to plug in 0 for x into our regression equation using the transform data. So my natural log of my remaining M&Ms, hat, and again, this is just a prediction, 4.0593 minus 0.68073 times 0. Well, that's just going to be 0. So that's 4.0593. But again, that's the natural log of my remaining M&Ms. I don't want the natural log. I want just the remaining M&Ms. So I need to do E raised to both of those. So I'm going to have my M&Ms. So I did E raised to the 4.0593, which gives me approximately 58 M&Ms um, I predict that were in the bag originally. All right, y'all. We're done. You did it. Congrats.